Okay, just so that we can get started, I'm going to introduce myself and let you know who I am. Um, my name is Marta Mullen. I'm one of our transition facilitators for Baltimore County Public Schools. I do work on the southwest side, so I have schools in uh, Woodlawn Middle, Woodlawn High School, Arbutus, and Milford Mill. Um, I've been working with the transition department since 2020. So, okay. And we also have Lacey Roberts who is with us. She's gonna be the other presenter with us today. Um, our focus will be magnet programs and the magnet application. Okay. All right. Lacey, I'm gonna go ahead and get started now. I think we've, there's some- Okay, I've, I've, I've started the recording just so everyone is aware we're gonna record this to make this um, live. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. yeah, we've, yeah, we've had a number of parents ask us about whether or not they could check this out. So, all right. Okay, so um, today we're going to be learning about where to find some of the specific information about magnet programs in Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, we will also learn how to complete the magnet application for a student, and then look at how accommodations are going to be provided for the magnet assessments. Uh, we will understand the student selection process. We'll go through that part and then we'll review some of the important dates for applications and assessments for our magnet programs. Okay. All right. So it's going to take us a few minutes. We have a little bit of an agenda in here. Uh, multiple slides are going to kind of go through a couple of them. So if um, you have questions on something, we can come back to it at the end of the program when we do our question and answer session, we'll, we will shut off the recording and then you can ask some questions about that. We will ask if the questions don't specifically mention student names so that we're not um, sharing in, any specific information. Okay. If you do have questions other than that, you can contact either myself, Lacey, um, or, your own, um, or your own school's transition facilitator. Okay. All right, so we do know the magnet programs are basically like some of them are inside of our high schools and they allow students to kind of focus on something that's of a specific interest to them okay they will be working towards the diploma based requirements and they if you have a student with an iep um, learning differences those accommodations are going to be documented in both the iep and the 504 plan and they are followed by the school but um, when we have information we do have access to the magnet the BCPS magnet piece here. I'm going to see if this will let me show this. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. All right, let me see if... Ah, it says video unavailable right now. Okay, so I guess I won't be looking at that particular piece. But if you go into the BCPS website and you type in magnet, there is a lot of information that does come up and you will be able to see a number of the different programs that are available to us. Okay. In some cases, we have those programs through um, at specific schools, and so other places they're in multiple schools. Okay, so right now we are in the reviewing your options time period. So students have between September and the end of October to really figure out what it is that you want to do. Um, starting in October up through November, you will your, you and your child would be working to complete the application for the program, and then you can apply to up to three different programs at one time. That is the maximum, so you can't just put in forever for any magnet program. It should be something your child is interested in. Okay. Um, once they've selected those, they will have a chance to be able to go and explore. We have a number of different activities and things that are going on. Um, one of them did happen last night. That was at Milford Mill where they had a, an app, the magnet program hosted an application night. There will be another application night that will be held in, I believe it's going to be next week, I've heard it. it's going to be in, at Kenwood High School on the east side. Um, in December, between December and January, there is a magnet assessment for the programs that your child selected. Accommodations are provided as outlined on either the IEP or the 504 plan. Um, the date, March 8th, is going to be the releasing of the magnet decisions based on my own personal experience sometimes this date can change and it may not happen all in one time so there is a waitlist process we'll go through how the waitlist process is maintained and looking into the beginning of the year um, if your child doesn't immediately get accepted into the program and they are waitlisted that waitlist number does maintain until the 
until sometime like in September or October of the next school year. Okay. All right. Um, so September 30th, there is going to be a magnet expo. This is a great chance to be able to go see all of the magnet programs at one time. It is at the Delta Hotel in Hunt Valley. There's going to be a lot going on there. So you'll have a number of people from the ESOL representatives, our special education representatives will be there, as well as our CTE. And CTE is our career technical education. So they'll have some exhibits and some demonstrations that can go on. And just to add to this, if you're planning on going, please talk with your kids about the programs that are offered ahead of time to kind of limit um, which things you're going to be looking at because it can get overwhelming in there for a lot of students. So be sure you've talked with them and kind of narrowed as much as possible before you go to that. Yeah, that's a great point, Lacey. There is, it's going to be a crowd. Um, and that crowd, if that's going to be something that's overwhelming for your child and there'll be too much, too much stimulation, you want to consider that as you're going through. Okay. All right. um, might be a better idea, especially if you want your child to be able to get a, like a closer look at something to consider the school showcases. They will also have a number of people there, but it will be less. Um, throughout October, the schools will offer the showcase events for the magnet programs. Okay, and I'm going to, I thought it was going to let me highlight that. Of course it won't, right? Let's see. Um, and of, again, this would be more of an in-depth look at what is going on in each school and the programs that they have offered in each school. So you would go to the school of your choice and access the programs and um, the actual things that are going on in that schoolhouse. And sometimes you'll get to meet the teachers that are actually going to be teaching there. So you can look at some of the different things that are going on that, that way. Um, I am in the process of kind of dropping. Um, I dropped the email address that you see here for the link that shows you all of the school scheduled events that is in the chat right now. If you have access to that, you can click on that and it will take you to a calendar event and show you that. Huh? All right. Um, in addition to that, they some of the schools do have their own video system. And while they're doing the video system, you can go in and look at those as well. So that might be a chance to like kind of look at it first and then decide which ones you might want to focus on a little bit more and then pick and choose from there. Okay. All right. Um, so as I had said, there was an application information information meeting yesterday at Milford Mill, but next Wednesday on September 27th, Kenwood High School will have another one. Um, if you need interpreting services for that, then, then you would contact magnet at bcps.org in order to request an interpreter. Okay? And that'll be from 6 to 7.30 next week. They will focus specifically on the magnet programs. Okay? Or on that application process. Okay. All right, so this is a little bit different. This is about how they are going to be selecting the magnet individuals. So there's a certain number of them that are priority placement seatings, and it depends on the program itself. Um, the, they will, the schools will get to check to pick a certain number of seats that are given to individuals who qualify at the highest rate. From there, they do a random lottery system um, in order to, the way that they rank the lottery system is that anyone who scores at 80% or higher on the admission criteria will be conducted to fill available seats and then generate a wait list. They do that with, that with the lottery system, filling in those names. If there are still additional seats left after, the, after this, okay, then they will go ahead and start looking at who scored 79% do a lottery, who scored 78% lottery. And it continues on down until they have enough, enough numbers. Um, personal experience, my son chose to not do one of the required pieces. He was placed on the wait list, but he was like number 130 something. So when he asked me, am I gonna get in? I was like, no, you're not gonna get in. All pieces of the, making an effort on all pieces of the magnet application, um, whether it's a demonstration or a video or the assessment are all counted with little sections of that. And I think that's important. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go over some assessment basics for you guys. Of course, your students can access their IEP plan and 504 plan accommodations. The assessments will take place between December and January based on the calendar that is shared in the magnet brochure because each place does a different um, time frame and schedule and it, it really depends on the volume of students they have to assess. Assessments will only be rescheduled with documentation of unforeseen illness or emergency emergency as well. And you're also going to want to prepare um, your student um, for this type of environment because it's not typically in their homeschool or with their homeschool teachers. So we find that some of our students uh, need that heads up prior to going into the assessment portion. Another thing that we have to talk about is um, when they go through the assessment procedures, some of the assessments are academic, such as reading or math um, that they would normally do to get placed. Other things are based on their field. So for example, if they want to go into, let's say cosmetology, they have to perform a roller set and some, some hair parting and things like that in order to um, successfully complete the assessment process. If they want to go into culinary arts, they have to um, carve an apple into the shape of a swan this year. Um, and there are various uh, tips and tricks and videos and um, exactly what the criteria is for those different assessments uh, online and available to you. I did drop um, the Sharp School information in here. So if parents want to click on that, they can see some of the different ones. I watched several of the videos. They do offer very, very clear cut videos and they can practice them ahead of time. Um, the, my understanding, having looked at what the what the requirements said, was um, those requirements. It's not that it has to be perfect, but they need to be able to follow directions and they need to be able to go through and make the effort with this. The other thing that's worth mentioning here is that the magnet process is lengthy and it is going to take multiple steps and pieces. Another thing that we did not mention is that attendance plays a crucial part. There is normally a pretty significant emphasis placed on attendance for each one of these magnets because they want um, students to attend school that are going to be going into these magnet spots. So there's a criteria and like a rubric for students and it includes attendance, it includes previous grades, it includes assessment um, data and information, as well as performance tasks and how they do. Um, and that culminates their scores to get in to these programs. All right. So um, uh, Ms. Frank Franklin said that she um, had clicked on one of these and got an error message. Um, I'm wondering if it has something to do with being in network. So I'm going to go ahead and see if this works, if I can if I can take me to it. And now you're right. It says that it can't be shared, but I had checked it previously. OK, let's see. I'm going to go to Google and see if I can put in the new links while we're talking. Um, some of the things that we've run into with students that were taking um, the magnet uh, assessments were a lot of them would have to do things and then um, videotape themselves doing them. So they may require parent support in that regard. There is um, multiple things that come up like that, that the, your student may ask you to participate in some capacity just um, as a support. For example, the application may be a little bit out of their element. We found lots of kids don't know what a zip code is anymore. So be sure you're not leaving your child uh, to fill out this application on their own because there are some questions that may be foreign that you might assume based on your experience that your kid knows. Mm -hmm. Um, and the application does require when you're putting it in, when I went through it myself, um, it required my email address and like if you've had an older child go through the process, then 
again, email address might be remembered, but I didn't remember what the password was and it wouldn't let me create a new one. And I asked, so I clicked on, hey, send me a new one. And I never, and I didn't get a response right away. So it, I had to wait like an hour or so to be able to change that link. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I came back to it multiple times when I had first done that. Um, okay. Um, I currently have up the, um, I have, a, have up the, BCPS website. And what I'd like to do is pull that piece up for a moment, Lacey. I'm going to take the presentation down um, only so that I can look at some of the information that we have here. So it's going to take a moment. Okay. okay. I was able to upload the links straight from the web for some of the things. I'm looking for the assessment criteria at the present time. And once I get that, I'll upload that as well for parents. I just want to be sure they can see it because it seems kind of intimidating, but it's really... Um, simple once you look at it. I think when you first described, I think that you and I will feel that you, you described the idea of having to make a swan. And I was like, what, how do you make a swan out of an apple? And I actually went back and watched the video and where they were talking about being able to make the garnish. And I was like, okay, this makes a lot more sense now watching the video because they took it step by step through that, that piece. So that repetitive watching of some of these videos and seeing what the child, what they're doing just to get comfortable with it first is going to really help someone with that. Okay. All right. Sure. And just so you guys know, I did try to make the, um, the swan myself and I was able to successfully complete it. Okay. I don't eat apples, so I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> so Sorry about that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me go ahead and um, I have up the Baltimore County Public Schools website right now. All right. So if, when I was going in here, I was able to go ahead and type in the magnet programs and you can see some of the different things that they have that it'll pull up immediately. Um, looking at the magnet um, information, it'll pull these types of things in here. So here's the applications and admissions. Okay. And it's going to go through this entire piece where it talks about like the different links. So they have the, the magnet brochures here and you can either click on the links that, that Lacey had shared here or go into the school website and then be able to download the magnet application. Um, look at the application directly. And then here's our magnet showcase schedule. So I'll click on that one just because you can see in here, Let's see if I can make it a little bigger for us. There we go. Um, and they're going to do it. There are some magnet programs at the elementary and middle school as well. When, right now we're looking specifically at the, at the high school ones. So they're going to give you the name of the school and they're going to tell you the dates that are going to be in here. They are going to be based on the school though and not necessarily based on the program. So at the time that they do the magnet program, they will show, showcase every one of the magnet programs that they have. You'll see that a lot of programs are throughout some of our neighborhood schools. Um, transportation is one of those little sticky areas. You will need to investigate if that is going to be something that your child is able to access for transportation from their home school to the magnet program, or if it's something that you would be providing. Um, of course, if something's on the IEP, then we would have to look at that a little bit differently. Okay. All right. Marta, is there a way you can pull up this last link that I just shared with them so that they can see what the page looks like where they get the assessment information? Because that yes. confuses a lot of families. This page we found was pretty much buried um, in, um, in the program. So if you click this last link that I put in the chat, it will come up with a list of programs. And when you click on any of those programs, it will tell you exactly what the assessment um, criteria is. So if you go ahead and click on one of those, Mar Marta, can you click on culinary arts or cosmetology since we just went over those? Uh -huh. And you, you can see the page will come up and it will tell you exactly what the student has to do in order to be successful. And it, it'll give you an overview of where the programs are in the county. And then from there, it'll tell you um, what the assessment limits are and what has to be completed all on this 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 one pager or two pager uh -huh. so that should be very helpful for you guys um, to kind of figure out what is supposed to be happening uh -huh. yep. so and here you can show you like where they are within the school as well so this is um eastern tech uh, this is carver 
Western and Sellers Point um, so for the different schools that have some sort of program. The one that I think Sellers is the one that has like a baking and both baking and pastry and a culinary arts program, whereas Western has more culinary arts and um, culinary arts is also available at Eastern Tech and at George Washington Carver. Okay. I'm going to present something really quick, um, just so that they're aware. Down there, okay. okay. It ahead. should let me steal it from you, I think. Um, so this is the page I was talking about that I just put in the chat. If you click on these high school assessment guidelines and schedule, and you want to know, gee, what do they expect out of a culinary arts student? You can click on this link here. It will come up. It'll tell you the dates and the assessment guidelines. When you click those, that's the paper I was talking about that will show you the eligibility, the assessment schedule, um, what they expect, when the dates are, exactly what they have to do, how do you access the video so that they can make, this one's for the, the SWAN, um, how they make the SWAN, um, and they can just rewatch that over and over again. Um, they have to, you know, here's some sample math questions that the students will be asked. It's pretty comprehensive and it even gives you the answers here. So this link here is going to be really valuable to you guys as you go through this process. And they have the, uh, 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 sorry, a sheet like that for all of the different magnet opportunities. I think that's a great point, just to be able to bring that particular piece up and looking in and making sure that they're going in and looking at what the requirements are going to be. It, number one, it's going to give them that sense of, okay, I know what I'm doing. And then the second part is going to be being able to like, just get comfortable with it. That'll make them feel more confident in that. Definitely. And I've found in the meetings I've done with uh, several of the eighth grade students, they do have a lot of apprehension and have a lot of questions. So going to these magnet nights and and following up with them and having conversations with them routinely around the dinner table will definitely be, or in the car while you're driving, will definitely be helpful in easing their nerves because I spent most of the time with students doing those types of things. And most of them uh, that I've spoken with have some level of interest. And even if they ultimately decide that this isn't for them, it's still a good good exposure opportunity to start talking with them about employment. I think that's a great idea. Uh, Lacey, I love the part where you said something about being able to talk when you're in the car. Kids will open up to you more when you're sitting side by side them than you are staring at them. So um, being able to like discuss the fact that some of these tasks are going to be there and that they need to be able to be willing to make sure that they're getting their accommodations and things are being set up for them is something that we want them to do now, starting now. So I'm going to go ahead. It looks like we're running a lot ahead of time. It took a little bit less than I had anticipated. Um, do you have specific questions or anything that we can answer? Were there any specific programs that your children have said that they're most interested in? Because we can pull that list up again and look at some of the different ones that are available and then kind of dive down a little bit into them. So let's see if I can kind of go backwards here. Hi there, Miss Mullin. Um, my son is interested in doing um, sports at Kenwood. Um, he uh -huh. has... Uh, IEP in place um, due to his ADHD, which affects him academically. Um, okay. My concern is he's got his heart set on Kenwood. Um, and as you can tell by my accent, not being from here, I am trying to get my head around this um, magnet program and trying to get him into the place, the school that he wants to um, do sports in. So you know, people have suggested Kenwood, Eastern Tech, uh -huh. but then after that, I'm stuck. Now, he's mentioned Parkville High to me, but because maths is his 
worst subject. I've said I don't think that would be the best um, mm -hmm. to go to. And his home zone school, I think, is Hollabird, Dundalk. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm just not sure. Like I said, this is all new to me. Um, yeah, it is, a new pro it is a new process. As somebody who um, attended schools overseas in Europe and went through a... To a um, and went to basically the only high school, the only American high school we went, coming mm -hmm. back to the States and finding out that people that I had known had, were going to all of these different schools that they had been accepted in was something that was very different. Um, it was not something that I was familiar with. Um, so there are going to be a number of other options. And I would really say that if the sports academy has one thing, um, so if they're looking specifically at being able to investigate towards in sports, health, and fitness fields. It's not going to be quite so narrow. He may want to encourage him to broaden that a little bit and also maybe look at some of the ideas of, um, I would say, some of the other health backgrounds. You know, there's a, I think we have some physical therapy things. I'm trying to think of um, anything that might be medical based. There is a health and human services option and that is at Newtown High School and Lansdowne High School so a little out of your area but probably Lansdowne wouldn't be quite so far away from from where you are now then as Newtown would be so. now I have pulled up for you the assessment components and evaluation tool that will be used for the sports program he's interested in in Kenwood just so you and everybody else can see how detailed the information that is online is. It says that he would need a 2.5 um, B average or higher. That gives him 10 points. If he has less, he gets zero points. And then it goes uh, based on his social studies and math. And then he has to write an essay and he has to take a, a magnet exam. And those together would tally his total points. And then if you scroll down, it, it will tell you um, what they're looking at. So they're going to look at his last year's report cards um, and his uh, how to prepare for the assessments. And here's what's on the magnet test that he would be taking, PE, science, math, reading. And it gives you a sample essay as well. And then sample questions. Oh, I'd like to be able to see some of that stuff. So thank you very much, Lacey. Yeah. I, I, and it I gives the that. answer. I yeah. can put it in the chat for you directly and you can copy it if that's helpful. Yeah. No, I did have a look at the magnet brochure and I did have a look at the assessment. Um, and I've told him as well that, you know, that's something he's got to look into. So, yeah, I will look okay. into that. Um can I ask you a, another question? So I've got one child going into high school and then I've got another child going mm -hmm. into middle school also. Mm -hmm. um, she's very good at arts, painting. So I was looking at Loch Raven, but I've also um, advised that there's no transportation for Loch Raven. Are you able to advise me of like what other schools in, um, I guess, the, the Colgate area that, do arts or is it going to be a case where I'm just going to have to send her wherever and then look at arts in high school? So you may, um, unfortunately, this meeting is more focused on the high school side of That's things. Fine. So That's fine. Our, our information um, may not be as helpful. I know okay. Lock Raven is a great school, um, but mm. I, I don't, I'm not as familiar with the elementary going to middle school other than okay. ones I've frequented. Okay. Um, I, Sherry, no it, would you mind, um, Sherry, You, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Yes. Good evening. Hello. I was just um, interested in hearing about the transportation. If so the transportation is varied based on program and where your child is going. It's my I, understanding that um, a lot of times they'll have you meet at a centralized location and bus some of the students to some of the programs, but it's really contingent on where you live and very specific information. So for okay. us to say, um, without a doubt, there's transportation and it's gonna work for your family would be unfair. 
I think that's going to be tricky for our family because I have twins and they both want to go in opposite directions. So I that know. I know it, it, it depends, like you just said, individually, but I think that's, that's going to be our snag. Mm -hmm. I can definitely feel that. And I know that sometimes I felt like I was very frustrated because my son wanted to apply to Sellers for their program but we don't live in one of the areas that that offers transportation to get the sellers. And I was like, well, I can't just leave and go drive you or pick you up from school because the way they have it set up was a half day. So um, transportation is absolutely one of those areas that can be a little, a little frustrating. So. Definitely. Stacy, did you have a question? Yeah, so I, I'm sorry if you answer this. I had to jump on a phone call, but I, my my question is about some of the assessment things that I seen where they're looking at like their grades and all of the attendance. Is that something that we have to provide, get from the school and provide, or they already go in and look at that? Since they have access to, if your child's already currently enrolled in Baltimore County Public Schools, then they will be able to look at that for them. They may ask you for something specific, but um, my did not have when I applied for my son, I did not have to put that extra information in because they have access to it already. Okay, that, that's all I have. Any other questions? Here I have pulled up the dance assessments and evaluation. It involves uh, obviously a dance component, but they also have to do an interview. And it goes through on this page what the, their exercises are, how they expect them to do a video, um, how they want them to stand, what music they want, uh, some of the interview questions, what they should wear to the interview. All of that is on these assessment pages just to give you an idea now, i actually went through and watched the dance one where the teacher was um they they showed it from multiple perspectives exactly what they wanted they walked everyone through it multiple times and from different perspectives so that you would be able to see that so if kids are used to learning certain dances and stuff from videos, I think they would do pretty well with that. I was pleased with that part. So. Yeah, yeah, and I also found it very interesting that some of the more technical programs, such as the ones down at Sollers, they had uh, components as well related to the trades. So for example, I'm gonna see if I can pull that up while where people are thinking of their questions, but say you wanted to go into the automotive service um, you would still have to take an assessment related to, hold on. Uh -huh. So you would take the assessment and then you would go in and not just sit. So you have to have an appointment. You have to, um, take a math assessment, you still have to have decent grades, you have to have good attendance, you have to take a science assessment, um, and, and the criteria is still um, that they took certain math courses and that they um, have met criteria and do well on their exams. Mm -hmm. And this is for the automotive program, just to give people an idea. Okay. All right. And I pulled up this particular um, piece. Let me see if I can. Here, I can stop yeah. sharing. I have the descriptions by school that we can look at here. And so some of the based on, and this one looks specifically at the high schools here. So they'll tell you what school um, Chesapeake High has, like the arts, arts media and communication, um, business information, leadership and humanities, and then science, engineering, and mathematics. So that's in our Southeast area. 
Um, Eastern is a completely separate school. Everybody in the school is a magnet program. So every class, everybody has that particular piece. Over here on the side, you can also see what year you can enter. So in some of the programs, students who, if they don't get in the first year, they can apply again for the second year. Um, and that would be the Academy of Health Professions, Building and Construction Technology, Technology, Culinary Arts, Engineering, Environmental, um, Cybersecurity, um, Interactive Media Production, Law, and the Teacher Academy. Um, Another separate school is going to be um, George Washington Carver, which has the acting, the construction trades, cosmetology, culinary, dance, design and production, um, music, um, the IMP program, and artificial intelligence program, some literary arts, visual arts, and vocal music. Okay. Um, Kenwood has the IB program and the sports science program. Okay. Um, lands down as the Academy of Health, Sciences, Dance, Instrumental Music, Mass Communication, Theater, Visual Arts, and Vocal Music. Um, Aisha, you had a question for us? I do have a question. Um, if they apply to one program and get in, but say they don't really like it, are they able to switch programs once they are admitted into the school? Um, no. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. So because they have this seating based on who applied, if you're applying, that's one of the reasons that they limit you to applying to three different programs. So you're accepted to a specific program. There is not necessarily going to be a seat to switch over. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and then in addition, we have Milford has some of the other programs. So acting, auto, auto service, more building and construction, cosmetology, dance, design, music, uh, literary, visual arts, and vocal music. Um, Newtown has the IB program. Okay. Overly has a health science program. Um, computer science has at Parkville engineering, the IMP, the IT, and the teacher academy. And then we have our Patapsco Center for the Arts, which also has our acting, dance, design, um, instrumental music, literary arts, visual arts, and vocal music. Um, Randallstown with its Academy of Health Professions, the Multimedia Communications. Sollers has programs that a lot of them you can see they can enter in either ninth grade or 10th grade in here. Okay. And Sparrows Point has the Environmental Studies. Towson has the Law. Western is a completely separate school and has a number of programs that are that are similar to what was at Eastern. So the Academy of Health Perfections, Automotive Service, Cosmetology, Culinary Arts, um, Environmental Science and Technology, Graphic Print, okay, IT, um, Networking and both Artificial Intelligence, and then Mechanical Construction, such as Plumbing, Sports Science Academy, and Woodlawn has the Early College Program and the Project Lead the Way for Engineering. So one person had, you had asked about whether or not you could get into a separate program. I'm going to kind of slide into it a little bit different. Um, my husband, my husband, my son, my older son did leave a magnet program when he was not meeting with success with the math that was required at Parkville. But he did move into a project lead the way program that was not necessarily a magnet. So sometimes you can end up still staying in the same school, but you slide into something that's a little bit different and that would depend upon what it is that would work and you would require special permission from the um, principal. And that of course is a case by case isolated circumstance. Absolutely. And not the mainstream. Life, it, was, it was very much an isolated situation and I did have to provide his transportation to and from. So. Mr. McCraw, did you have a question for us? Yes, thank you. I, I actually have two questions, if that's okay. Yes, um, sir. I wanted to know if there are any resources or like student supports available for the application process um, to help with it or help review it um, or help coach a child towards the best fit for them, anything like that that you know of? Um, I would probably say that if you're going to, the child is not necessarily the one who's going to complete the application. Um, that is something that I would say is, was a parent thing. 
I sat down and did the application. I talked to my son about the different pieces to it, but I really filled out all of the application um, when he was going through that. Partially just because there were some specific questions about addresses, my contact information, things that he wasn't as familiar with. When it came to picking which classes he wanted to apply for, that was something we went to. Um, we went through the entire book and he looked through all of the different things that were available for each one. And we would click on them, look at it, talk about what he wanted to do. Um, we did at, we were looking at a time when they didn't have the, the magnet program because he's in 10th grade this year. They had the magnet, but they didn't have the opportunity to go out and explore a whole magnet presentation. So all of his things, he was able to look at the online videos that they had for, and pictures from each of the websites that he was interested in. And to, to kind of piggyback on that, I'm not sure that you would want um, any staff member filling that out for, for your child. Um, it's probably better served if you guys do it as a family only because your child might sit with us and pick basket weaving and, you know, the conversations you've had at home are IT and then there's a, a disalignment and a whole, a whole undoing process there. So it's probably best um, within the family dynamic, if possible, to complete some of this stuff. But we're certainly here to help and we can have some conversations uh, but remember, they can apply to three programs, so that should help um, also. Thank you. Right. And then my, my other question was about going back to transportation. I know it's kind of site specific, um, but do you know if there are any schools that do feed from Pikesville Middle that you know of, if that's a site that is a transportation site for any magnet schools? Okay. So that is, I believe that Pikesville Middle is considered the Northwest area. Um, that would probably, that's kind of hard to say. Um, most likely it would be, and Joyce, you can correct me if you're familiar with something that I'm not. Um, I would say probably look in the Northwest areas because you're considered one of the Northwest areas and I would also consider Western High School. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay. I wish we could tell you all the busing, but sometimes it changes as well. Right. So we don't want to give you the wrong information on busing. Um, okay. Would I'm honestly sure say the counselor at Pikesville Middle would be to talk to someone who's directly there. If you go out to the expo that's going to be held next week at the um, at the Delta, I think it's the Delta Hotel. Is that what we said? Hold on, let me look at my presentation. <laughs> yeah, it's the Delta Hotel, but yes, also Delta. the guidance counselor can help you um, mm -hmm. with with that very specific information as far as busing because they would know what comes in and out of their school. So if your kid goes to Pikesville Middle, I would talk to the counselor there as well as another resource. Absolutely. And, you know, and consider that even if they have busing on there, it is going to be an early morning bus ride. It is definitely going to extend the, the amount of time that it's going to take them both to get to school and for some of the time that's going to get home. Okay. Sarah, you have a question? Thank you. I have another question. Mm -hmm. I, I know that it's it, it's uh, usually on a um, a case by case basis, but I, I'm seeing that there's an attendance component, 94 percent, and both of my they both of my boys have asthma and they have less than 94 percent. So if there's medical documentation, would they make exceptions, or I would just have to speak to them individually? I would think that would be an individual thing, but because it would be a medically related thing and it's probably been documented in more than one place, it would, there would be some um, consideration of that would certainly be taken. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that lady before me asked that question because I have the same issue with my son. His allergies are really, really bad. And I know at the minute, well, obviously um, semester's just started, but last year it was under 94 due to his asthma and allergies. Mm -hmm. Just be sure you're, if this is something you're earnestly considering, just be sure you're documenting it to the best of your ability and you're being transparent um, with the school, with your doctor's notes and things so that if it does come up as an issue for your child, it can mm -hmm. be explained medically. You know what I'm okay. saying? Like, don't just, yes. don't yeah, just that's not. A great point. <laughs> that's a great point because I know that as a teacher, what I frequently found is that my kids didn't always drop in notes. And so if it's something that they would say, well, I was sick and 
but you would go in and look ahead and turn a note into anybody. So please emphasize with them that they absolutely do need to turn in notes um, for any absence in order for them to be considered an excused absence. And don't well, they, assume because they're teenagers, they do it because they don't. Well, I email all his teachers for any appointments or um, in regards to his ADHD medication, any, so yeah, they always emailed. And obviously I do get notes from his psychiatrist and also notes if it's dental, what have you. Yeah. Um, and and so. I, I, I do the same thing. I, I'm on a first name basis with the secretary at their middle school and I just email her yeah. directly the doctor's note and the documentation and she sends it to where it needs to go. Perfect. Wonder. I, think I like hearing that because that's definitely one of those things that's going to be a consideration for, for them. Okay. And we're just telling things that we've seen get sticky over the years. So, um, if, if you're an outlier and, and really have it figured out, we're sorry to be repetitive, but we just want to be sure people that sometimes overlook things don't get caught in the crosshairs because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great kids that, you know, forgot to turn in their doctor's notes for whatever reason, you know? Yeah, my son was definitely one of them. We had to have a conversation about that last year and that was his first year of high school of like, well, this is marked. They don't have to let you make up that assignment if you didn't turn the note in. <laughs> so um, that was that was definitely something that was a learning experience for him. Have your kids brought home the magnet brochure to you and had their conversations with guidance? Are you finding that to be um, the norm in your household? Or are you feeling like as parents, you're bringing up the topics? Um, for me, I have to, I've spoke to my son's guidance, my, my son attends Parkville Middle at the moment, I've spoke to his guidance counsellor, I've advised her that I'm going to attend the Kenwood meeting and the Expo, and she advised once I've done that, then um, I'll reach out to her so we can discuss what to do next. Perfect. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I have to leave the meeting to go pick my, my, my other child up. Um, where is this meeting so I can, um, you said this meeting is being recorded, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is being recorded. We will post that on, um, on the transition website. Um, okay. Basically, I will, will send out a link to you at one point okay. so that you, if you can come back to and look at it, it will also, it'll show you the presentation they got. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you for your time, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for your attendance and questions. We appreciate it. Does anyone else have any questions for us? So again, the best advice we can offer you is to sit down with your, um, your student and talk with them and have earnest conversations about what it's going to require to go through the application process and have them look over the programs. Some of the programs, they're not going to know what the job is that's associated with that program. So you may also have to have some of those conversations. And now is the time to be having those conversations to help them narrow uh, where it is they would like to apply. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the Kenwood. Can we put back up the Kenwood dates so that they can have that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was, I tried to get back to it. Is it up now? Yeah, Kenwood is. So Wednesday, okay. September 27th, 6 to 7.30 at Kenwood High School. And then where's the one for the Delta Hotel? And that's in um, Hunt Valley off of Shawan Road. Now that's yeah. the big one that will absolutely have 32 schools with magnet programs and then they will have both representatives. So people who are teaching, administrators who are part of it, they will be the ones who are there. So you ask, you can get some specific questions in. It's also a good opportunity to make sure that your child is, is able to ask some of their own questions. I would have them lead with being able to have like two or three questions that they wanna ask about attending that particular school. Have them write them on a sticky before they go in. I want to ask the engineering people this, this, and this. I want to ask the 
art people this, this, and this about my portfolio or whatever. Have them do the homework ahead of time so that they're not nervous or anxious because a lot of times they go into these environments and they're not quite as prepared and they get anxious and quiet and it feels overwhelming. So if we can take some of that off and do some of the pre-work, that would also be really helpful for most students. Mm -hmm. yep. And I completely agree with that. Practicing is always going to be that beneficial thing for them. And the people that are going to be there want them to be there and we're going to be very friendly. So it's not going to be a very negative place. This is going to be someone who wants to share what they're teaching and what they're learning about with them. Also, if you would like, you can get on the BCPS magnet website and pull down the brochure, just the general brochure to start those conversations with your student. That's also a great way to get them talking about opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that that's about it for us. Um, anything else, Marta? I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, if, again, if you have questions, you will get in touch with either me or Lacey and ask us something specific. Um, if we can't answer the question, we can at least direct you in the right place. I'm, go I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording at this time. We thank you again for your attendance and hope to see you guys at the, the Magnet Expo or the night at Kenwood. Mm -hmm.